Hello there. My name is Victoria Kennefick, and on behalf of Listowel Writers Week Young Adult Book Fest, I'm delighted to welcome you to this online event with Frances Rocks. Frances is a secondary school teacher, an experienced examiner of junior and leaving cert English, as well as being an author of a number of different textbooks, some of which you might be using in class. Here, Frances provides some tips and tricks when it comes to approaching paper one, section B, or the functional writing section of your paper. This is worth, as you probably know, a whopping 50 marks. So make sure to have your pen in hand to take down her advice in how to crack the code of question B by deconstructing the tasks on the paper. She's also included an activity for you to complete once you have watched this video. We hope you find this very helpful and thank you for tuning in and enjoy. Hello, my name is Frances Rocks and today I am going to explore functional writing. Functional writing is writing for a purpose. It is important for you to understand this because you will use this in many aspects of your life. Section B, the comprehending task, is marked out of 50. The marking scheme is PCLM. Purpose. Are all aspects of the task being addressed? There are 15 marks for that. Coherence. Is the response controlled, paragraphed and sustained throughout? 15 marks. Language. Is the writing appropriate to the task? 15 marks. Mechanics, spellings and grammar, accurate, 5 marks. First we'll examine the opinion piece. Opinion pieces or feature articles are written prose pieces that usually appear in the print media or on websites. They often focus on people or issues rather than events. Opinion pieces inform, entertain and persuade. They offer another personal, sometimes humorous perspective. What are the features of opinion pieces? A personal engaging tone, humorous touches, lively anecdotes or illustrations, conversational and emotive language, repetition, short sentences. We will be looking at a sample answer which will go through all of these features. But the most important part of the section B comprehending is to decipher the question. Here is a series of questions that you should ask yourself before you begin to write. Content. What do I have to write about? Persona. Who am I as the writer or speaker? Purpose. Why am I writing this? Audience. For whom am I writing? Register. What type of language and tone will I use? Genre. What format should the writing take? Here is a sample question from the Leaving Cert. The views people hold today are often influenced by the news and information they receive from the online world of the internet and social media. Write an opinion piece for publication in a national newspaper in which you give your views on the extent to which people today rely on the online world as a source of news and information, the reliability of these sources and the impact of this development on society. You have 45 minutes to do this question. You should spend 10 minutes organising yourself. Deconstructing the task. Ask yourself these questions to clarify the purpose. On what do I have to write? 
the extent to which people today rely on the online world as a source of news and information, the reliability of these sources and the impact of this development on society. As you can see, there are three separate discussion points. If you leave out one of those discussion points, you will be penalised out of the 15 for P. This matters because if you're penalised out of the 15 for P, the C and the L also fall. So it is very important to realise that there are three separate discussion points which you have to address. Who are you as the writer or speaker? You are no longer a 16 or 17 year old student. You have to adopt a persona. You are now a writer for a national newspaper. Who am I addressing? This is the audience, the readers of a national newspaper. And why am I writing this? To give my views and opinions on how the online world of the internet and social media impact news and information. What type of language will I use? You will use language which is persuasive, emotive, humorous and informative. And finally, the shape of the piece. The format is the genre. It's a feature article in a newspaper. Let's now look at a sample answer. Fake news, real news, whose news? The world of journalism has progressed into a new technological age. Today, we see more and more amateur footage through tweets, snaps or posts on our internet devices. But how reliable is the information presented? What impact is this development having on society? A fundamental change has occurred in the news business. Due to the internet, we no longer have to buy information in prefabricated packages like newspapers. Instead, we can just go online and individually select what we want to read. People get to choose their own adventure. There are many websites and blogs available, often pre-selecting articles and providing links to related sites. But how reliable is all this news? Online organisations charge advertisers based on the number of hits they can get on a site. Several online news organisations could cover the same story. Which version is going to get the most hits? and therefore generate most revenue, usually the most sensational ones. Reporters are being pushed to extend the boundaries of provocation online. The domino effect then kicks in. Other online news sites pick up the story that is now trending and it soon goes viral. This impacts positively and negatively on our society. In the past, news flowed from the few to the many. Old style reporting consisted of spotting the news story, checking the sources and writing it up. Nowadays, news flows from the many, the web, to the many. Even reporters use the web for information gathering. The shocking events at the World Trade Center in 2001 foreshadowed how events are covered today. Feeds from social networking services such as Facebook and Twitter provide a snapshot of such events happening worldwide from the viewpoint of first-hand witnesses. Just think of the coverage from the recent tragedies on London Bridge, Nice or Hurricane Harvey. But there are dangers. First-hand witnesses cannot see the big picture. The easiest way to broadcast content on a large scale is through the internet. It is easily updated. Breaking news is available instantly. It allows people to engage by leaving comments or starting online discussions. This is quicker than writing a letter to a newspaper, especially since it may not even be published. Online news helps the public become a thinking, reasoning society. However, people may confuse fact with opinion. 
This blurring of the line between fact and opinion has created an environment where extreme thought flourishes while balanced judgment is in danger. Many newspaper sales have declined sharply and they only provide online content. The cost of doing challenging, independent reporting has become cost prohibitive worldwide. Yes, I hope we might have the best of all worlds. Radio, television and film coexist side by side, at times feeding off each other. Perhaps newsprint and online news could take a lesson from them. Wouldn't it be to the benefit of everyone to have the advantages of breaking news coupled with carefully sourced reflective journalism? This successful answer has a very engaging opening paragraph. You will notice the use of rhetorical questions. You also have a hook and the hook is the word fake. Fake news, a current phrase used today. Here is a revision exercise for an opinion piece. Write an opinion piece for publication in a magazine in which you consider the importance of being happy, reflect on the obstacles to achieve happiness for young people in contemporary Ireland and offer advice on how they can adopt a positive outlook on their lives. Remember the questions. On what do I have to write? As you can see, there are three separate aspects to this question. The importance of being happy, a reflection on the obstacles to achieving happiness, and advice on how young people can adopt a positive outlook on their lives. Our second section B is a talk. A talk is an oral presentation aimed at a particular audience. It is often a mixture of argument and persuasion. Its purpose is to inform, reflect, influence. You might be asked, for example, to write a short talk welcoming a well-known person to your school. The tone in that case would be very different to a talk to your classmates about an important issue that affects young people. What are the key features of a talk? Address the audience, state what is to be covered and the angle to be taken. Rhetorical questions to engage the audience. We have already seen this in the opinion piece. Repetition for emphasis. Emotive language to establish empathy with the audience. Personal anecdotes. Humour to entertain. Such as, at the very start, let me say, we both have something in common. You don't know what I'm going to say, and neither do I. It's important to thank your audience for listening. Here is an example of a question. You have been asked to take part in a radio program entitled Reflections on a Changing World. Write the text of a talk to be broadcast in which you imagine yourself as an older person describing the changes you have noticed and reflecting on the world as you once knew it. Here we go, let's deconstruct. On what do I have to write? The changes in my world. Who am I as speaker? An older person. Who am I addressing? Radio audience. Why am I writing this? To describe and reflect on changes I have noticed. What type of language will I use? Descriptive, nostalgic, reflective, narrative, informative, humorous. And what's the shape? A radio talk. Writing for the ear. Sample answer. I would like to welcome Mrs Connolly onto our show Weekend Miscellany this morning to reflect on the changes she has noticed from when she was young. Good morning Brian, thank you for having me and good morning listeners. 
This morning I left my grandsons to school and set off once more down the familiar route of Dublin Street. On the left is Handy Stores. I used to accompany my gran when she went to get blue methylated spirit in an old lemonade bottle for her primus stove. Next door is Mayfair Jewellers, closed down now due to the strict no parking rules. On its left is Hong Ki, a new Asian grocery shop, its pungent spices perfuming the pavement and by its side is Halal Meats. Ireland's diversity is on rich display within 500 yards. Now I've done it. 500 yards. I've forgotten. They don't use imperial measurement anymore. Turning the corner, I see Morgan the fisherman's white van. I pull up to get some fresh herrings. Hopefully the traffic wardens are not prowling yet. Raw day, Mrs Connolly, he says. The usual, I suppose. Sure, Michael, I reply. Any news? Modern fashions is closing down. No. Can't compete with the big chains. Parking is a nightmare on the main street. Six euro, please. Thanks, Michael. See you next week, God willing. Climbing back into the car, I drive past the square. I smile as I recall my grandfather's story of the day the Irish volunteers defied the British army here. They stood on the Maid of Iron statue plinth, singing Irish songs. God save Ireland soared over the British army playing in celebration of the new king. They couldn't arrest them, you know, my grandfather said. Why is that, I asked. They were standing on the plinth, paid for by the townspeople, so they were on private property. They couldn't be arrested for singing songs on private property. Next, is modern fashions and splashed across the window 70% off. Closing down sale. I got my first communion dress here when I was seven. I remember the veil and the flower headdress. I thought it was the most beautiful dress in the world. Next door is another new business, digital tech, laptops, iPads, iPhones line up in a new shiny window. We must all update. I approach the green church, its copper spire soaring high. St. Richard Fitzralph is buried here. During the Black Death plague in the 14th century, he criticised the clergy and condemned the merchants for wasteful extravagances and underhanded practices. His tomb's exact location is unknown today, just like many of the old town businesses. Time passes. Everything changes. It is important to deconstruct this section B using the questions I have on screen. I have also sent an attachment with extra questions which can be downloaded. Thank you.